guys, it's that time again to uh, uh, journey into our little corner of the internet, our water cooler and our little corner of the internet. It's the Movie Minute. I'm Mike Sork here, of course, with my uh, the movie matriarch himself, Malengo, at Rambling Mango on the Twitters. How you doing this week, sir? I'm good. It's been a good week. Yes, yes. Hey, we, you got a few movies that you got in. I got one that I got in. I can mention too. Uh, but first, I want I want to hear. Give me give me one of yours. What 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 are you watching this week uh, that uh, uh, you want to tell us to uh, uh, go out and get or or just avoid like the plague? Well, the one the one interesting thing about this week was it was definitely uh, I want to say a slow week in movies. There was only one movie that really came out came out that seemed to be what people were into Mm -hmm. but besides that um i think a lot of my watching time went to television so with that being said i i spent uh, a little bit of time watching a lot of stuff on netflix so i I saw best man down which uh i have a review that i have to post up on it but that was a good one i like that it was a sad but good the place beyond the pines i saw that um Oh, you're showing the you're showing the preview for uh, Best Man Down. Yeah, yeah. This is a uh, this is definitely that. I seem to watch a lot of movies that I, I call them the Finding Yourself movie, uh, kind of like Elizabeth Town and the Garden State type stuff. I just call this the Finding Yourself movie. I think that this was along those lines, um, but yeah, it was a it was an interesting movie. Uh, Place Beyond the Pines. That is a crazy movie. I I actually recommended on my review that people see it, but I would not buy it. <laughs> so I don't know. However, however way you can watch this movie without buying it. So I guess Netflix. I think it's on Netflix. Tell, tell me what what all is this about? Like, it, what what's the the place beyond the pines about? I've never heard of it. Um. Uh, so it's. <laughs> Without giving away the movie, I'll say Ryan Gosling's in it. So if you're for the if you're into that, yes. But it's I mean the guy who did Blue Valentine. If that's any indication of what this kind of movie is, it's very like gritty, very real, and it like plays on that human emotion of like people's lives, and you definitely have the sense that these people could exist, but. Um, I don't know, movies that tend to play off that very real and raw, like, life vibe usually have a tendency to come off as either inspiring or completely depressing. And I think this one, like, teetered the line, but it it showcases two generations and just the conflict that people have with, I guess, corruption, uh, a way of life advancement of life taking care of family it it crosses a lot of issues but the conclusion to the movie left me kind of like you know just kind of like oh well cool but very it's very slow and sad and ryan gosling i will ruin this it's if you're going to watch this movie just for him you shouldn't do that because he does not stay around for long. <laughs> so he's not a focal point. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. And then uh, for some reason, I since I'm an effects guy, I saw Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters, on a uh, good old thing, the jiggy, the red box thingy. That's one I wish I had returned. Yeah. I wish somebody had, like, tasered me. They, they throw in so, like, I don't think... The sad thing about this movie is I don't think it's a kid's movie, but I think it is. It's like they, it's not, it's not defined to a, uh, a generation or, or like a, like I, I, it's weird. It's like they, you know, they, they play up a bunch of kid jokes. So you're like, Oh, this is a kid's movie. And then they throw in the, the, the graphics and like very like, complex situations but then it switches back to a kid's movie so maybe this is a teenager's movie with really bad jokes okay 
That's yeah, probably what it is. It always looks but like. With, it, I mean, I mean, I think with something like Percy Jackson, when I see a trailer for it, the way it comes off, something like that, something like the Narnia movie, something like you know, maybe maybe with the Catching Fire stuff. Like, there's there's like some there's some feel to it that's like okay this is based on a book and a lot of kids are going to be toward you know be into this but there's like some like there's something about the tone you know that kind of it seems a little bit off for a movie like this is that is that what you feel yeah that's it because if it's based off a book then you're playing it off the the basis of these kids have grown up people that read this book so maybe we're going for a serious vibe with mm-hmm. that, but mm-hmm. it's, it's not a serious. Yeah. It's just, and I think it's part of the storytelling too, because you think about when you do a movie, there's a pretty standard, you know, build climax and fall, right. Unless it's something yeah. a little more broad, like most of these Oscar movies or something like that, right. More epic movies. Um, but I think, I think that's part of the adapting it from the book is there's a lot more of a roller coaster ride is whenever you see something like this. And I think that kind of plays a little bit to the, we're trying to figure out how to shoehorn this into, um, you know, some, some kind of film. So, yeah, definitely. And one of the questions I always ask when I watch the movie is that it flow like relatively well, was it, was it smooth going from scene to scene? And I mean, this movie, it's just scene cut after scene cut. You're literally, it's, it's literally, if you're a teenager with ADD, maybe you'll, enjoy this so, oh yeah that makes sense okay, so, it's like, so it's like oh, yeah, oh we're, okay sense. we're here now okay oh, okay we're here now you know like, yeah. like i know that's what kind of loses me like sometimes i don't understand why in mission impossible we went to dubai for x y and z reason you know all i know is something really yeah. cool is about to happen you know um <laughs> you know same with the born movies or something like that like they're hard to kind of place the you have to be you would know what's going on in something like that same with the bond movie you're just like he's in another exotic locale that's all you really need to understand in order to enjoy this movie. So, there's yeah, that. definitely. So, I mean, if I was going to rate those three movies, I mean, I think I would. I mean, The Place Beyond the Pines was definitely a better movie than Best Man Down, but that would be my order: Place Beyond the Pines, Best Man Down, and very, very far at the bottom would be Percy Jackson. That's a movie that you give to your kids to have them shut up so you could watch <laughs> something else in the other room. Yeah, yeah. Or filler filler movie. Uh, but, hey, in the weekend lineup, Thor barely, barely squeaked by. Well, I won't call it six million barely squeaking by. But more importantly was on Friday release, Best Made Holiday, which ended number two in the weekend lineup, was beating Thor. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty interesting. So uh, this, and I sent you an article uh, about that, and and I, I, <laughs> and I know you kind of laughed at at, at, at this too, um, but it was kind of like the middle part of the article. So it was more of a broad, hey, this is what's going on in the cinema kind of thing. And I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I apologize, I didn't pull it up. Oh, there, there it is. Uh, this was from Forbes.com. Um, and they were talking about how strong this was, and they compared it to what hap- what's happening with like the Tyler Perry movies, which I know you've told me on several occasions you don't even understand those. Um, yeah, I stopped after like Tyler Perry goes to prison, but somehow he's still walking around. Yeah, and, and driving and stuff. <laughs> so, so basically, the big takeaway from this was like, hey, black people like to go to the movies and they like to see themselves on screen. That's pretty much paraphrasing uh, what they said in here. Um, yeah. To to the point where like that they're not, um, 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 you know, the comic relief or the side or the sidekick, you know, that they are the focus of the movie. Like I like like a movie like this Best Man Holiday, which I think is a pretty mostly, if not all, black cast. Am I am I correct in that? Yeah, I think there was one white white guy in it, gentleman. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie yet, which is which is interesting. Based off one of the reviews, um, and uh, I will I have to give her credit for uh, I can't give her credit because I don't remember her name. That's that's her. Beyond beyond the trailer, uh, the girl that does that, uh, she had a pretty interesting review. I don't usually agree with all of her reviews on stuff like this, but she actually liked the movie. And this first time that her liking a movie made me actually want to see it because she's. I mean, she is 
she's not black. So she's coming from a completely different perspective. And uh, she's, I guess the big, val- the big valid point that I, that I took away that she uh, quoted on was the fact that, I mean, critics were like bashing this movie and generalizing this movie as a black genre compared to like a foreign film instead of just a movie. So I, I definitely think that, Yes, something like that will definitely throw people off when they see all these black actors on. But she states that it was funny. It held her attention through the whole thing. It was beautifully shot, and it was related to things going on relative to our culture now. So a movie like this, anybody would generally be able to relate to in the circumstances uh, and, that were. And, and definitely when I when I see trailers like this, I know, like, where I go to the movies, it's definitely a very, you know, white bread kind of neighborhood. And I know what was the, there's one like a year or two ago was the one was like for, for black women or something like that. Like the, that was the name of the movie. Do you recall this? And like, I specifically remember a, a old, old white lady behind me saying, well, I guess that's not for me. You know, I, you know like very, very uppity about it, you know, and everything. I'm just like, wow, you just did that. OK, uh, but uh, but I can usually get that sense when you see like a Tyler Perry movie, this Best Man Holiday one. Like you get the feel like I look around. It's like, yeah, none of these people know, care and know this is not a movie for them. You know, but I think that's um, is it too too off to say that that's really like when you're talking about a chick flick, you know, and say, well, that's not a movie for me. Um, I mean, it's definitely a cultural thing, I guess. Yeah, I think so. And I think that I don't know if that's something that hurts because like whenever you bring in racism and stuff like that into the movies, it always has a tendency to cross the line. But the thing is, these movies aren't like like I I, because I I, one other point in the article is that it's good to see black people in movies in major parts where the the purpose isn't to insert racism into the movie, which I presume these movies, again, with Tyler Perry's and everything like there's it's not about you know black versus white and differences it's about these are just being more identifiable in that culture i am not the person to be talking about this no it's true it's true (laughs) but it's good it's good to have the conversation though yeah exactly that's what we're all about so i mean i i definitely think that if somebody were to ask me like you know if if you mike were to say hey i'm thinking about going to see tyler perry's medea ghosts of florida 10 (laughs) jailbreak thing I would tell you, based on me seeing a couple of these movies, Mike, you probably want to save your money for something else. (laughs) Because she tailors, oh my gosh, I just said she. He tailors that to such a specific, not even black people, black people that go to church. So, like, it's such a specific Hmm. demographic that. If you're black, I mean, and you don't go to church, you'll still understand because, you know, there's a subculture there that's relatable to that to that genre. If you're white, you might understand it as well. But I definitely think his intent wasn't – I mean, he's in it for, to make money, of course. Yeah. But I think his intent was always black culture. He's from the South. He was born from the South. And some of his movies aren't bad – I'm sorry I said that. Some of his movies aren't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, for what they are, you know, it is. I, I'll give the guy. I would. I would sit down with the guy and talk. You know, over he's some coffee out. and he's talk like, strategy. He's figured out a niche. Yeah. You know, which I don't think a lot of people really kind of attack. Uh, so I mean, that's exactly what a lot of people do in podcasting and everything is find that niche and, and, and go for it. And he has built an empire on it. I mean, that's like Kevin Smith going after the Stoner movie. You know, definitely um, the, I, the slacker stoner movie and, and and he has an empire on it. And he's rebuilt that over and over again. There's a really much yeah. difference in the long run. I think the I think the underlining li- issue here is the fact that when people see this trailer, I don't I think they automatically I personally and I, you know, I'm African-American, as you can see. In case you're listening to the audio version of this. <laughs> and I, I jumped to conclusions about what I thought this movie was not even seeing the first one. So maybe for me being prejudiced to some point, I'm at fault for not giving the movie a shot. And I think a lot of critics out there also did that in their reviews and by crediting it saying like, well, you know, it's, it's a black film and we credit these black people. I don't, I don't know if that's what they should have targeted. I should, I think they should have targeted more on, 
hey, this is a really good film, and you'll enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the even the underlining things that came out, I, it, it definitely has that, um, what's the horror movies that we are sick of watching? Saw or Paranormal no, Activity? No, Paranormal, where very low budget and big return. They, I think this the first movie, uh, they spent $9 million and they got a return on that of about $30, $30 million on the first one. This one, they spent about 17 and opening weekend, they pulled in 30.1. And as, you know, as we're going into Thanksgiving and the holiday stretch, you know that this movie has the potential to, to rack up a lot more money than that. Oh, yeah. And the fact that it beat Thor on a Friday on Thor's second week, uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty significant. So, I mean, I definitely think, um, I don't know. I think my wife wanted to see this and not, uh, yeah, I'll stop with that. But, uh, <laughs> I, I think I'd, I'd check, I'll check this out. Awesome. Awesome. So I saw a movie, Malengo. What movie did you see, Mike? Um, well, you guys know we do the wrestling show here on this network, Sorgatron Media, and and one of the movies that pop up. I mean, there's this WWE Films thing uh, that they've been doing for years, and they've usually featured wrestlers as stars of the movies, like John Cena and and Kane in a horror movie and stuff like that. But this one, they uh, they did a lot of straight to DVD releases, and then yeah. earlier, I believe this year, uh, they started a lot of them that were back to the theater. And actual the- full wide theater releases from the looks of things. There was always like a limited release, and then it's like on DVD at Walmart a few weeks later, right? Um, but this one was Dead Man Down, actually starring Colin Farrell. And you would oh. not know it's a WWE film from from you know initially looking at it because uh, you don't see a lot of wrestlers all over the place. In fact, you see a, a small minuscule clip in the trailer that always went around of, of one of the guys, Wade Barrett. Um, and, and it feels like his part's even smaller when you get to the movie. Uh, so it, it, again, Colin Farrell, it's got the girl from uh, the uh, uh, girl with the dragon tattoo, the originals. Uh, she was also in Sherlock Holmes too. Uh, and also has the guy that plays the, uh, you know, first, you know, roadie from, from Iron Man. Um, so, <laughs> I totally just realized I started watching this movie and did not finish it. <laughs> and that was probably a good choice. It's there's not much to it. It's one of those like gritty crime drama e things. There's like a mystery. Like they supposedly, you know, they killed. It, it's from the director of the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Just actually popped up on the trailer. I didn't realize that. So kind of uh, the feel kind of makes sense now uh, with that. I kept losing interest in it, with it honestly, um, but. Uh, it's a Netflix, and it was on Netflix, so I'm cool with that. Um, it's Wait, of, explain the explain the wrestling thing, though. There's nothing. It, it all the the whole wrestling angle is only that WWE Films is just an arm of WWE at this point. They're not using it to prop up their wrestlers as movie stars anymore. They're using it to just produce films, and maybe they'll give a couple parts. This one was a guy that's really low level. Uh, the other one that came out around the same time that now I think it's starting to get play on Stars or something. So I imagine it'll be on Netflix soon. Uh, the one with Halle Berry, The Call, um, that actually had it used to have a little bit in the trailer. One of the guys that plays the cops is actually uh, David David Otunga, uh, who he has actually been seen a lot on wrestling lately. But he's actually the husband of uh, uh, Jennifer Hudson, so he's kind of got a big Hollywood name attachment there. Uh, on top of it uh so but again not played up a lot that it's wwe films and it's a lot of those you know one of those films when you see like four different studios were involved with this they're one of the four it's not a straight wwe films in association with you know like they usually do uh so i think it's a smaller role but i think it's maybe this is planning up to something bigger down the line that they can do a bigger movie with their own stars um if you're not familiar with what they've done before um the marine uh, twelve rounds. Um, as far as Scorpion the King, the well, rundown. No, 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 no. Scorpion King was kind of because that came off of the Mummy series. So that was produced by what MGM I think does the Mummy series. So I mean, of course they had kind of a co-production thing uh, yeah. going on there, but it was oh, co-produced. Yeah, yeah. That's so really so I mean, but it really see no evil was was a horror movie they put out. They're actually putting out a sequel here soon for that. I think at the beginning of the year. Um, try and think of some other big ones that might have come out. <laughs> None off the top of my head. But other than that, like straight to DVD stuff, 
Like I did not know the call was was one of theirs. Yeah, uh, you, exactly. You don't. So I'm I'm wondering what they're doing for this mass appeal. You would only know as a WWE mag uh, a movie, really, other than you sat down and watched it and you saw the emblem at the beginning and be like, wow, really. Um, but I think they realize that turns people off to certain things. So I think they're downplaying that a little bit. Um, and, but of course, whenever the movie comes out on DVD and on in the theaters. Uh, you can't get away from it when you're watching WB programming. Jeez, so, see, no, see No Evil was a huge one. Was it? Well, did it oh, wait, no, I'm no. thinking uh, Drag Me to Hell. Yeah, that's a different one. That's a different one. I mean, See No Evil wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. Uh, the Marine, I thought, was fine for what, what it was. The Marine 2 and 3, I don't know about. Um, yeah, but, I've never heard. So two, definitely, 2 was okay. rough. I haven't watched 3 yet with The Miz. It definitely feels like... They're definitely playing a backseat to a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, the call was definitely something that I don't remember that one really being in. I don't remember seeing commercials for that like hardcore. No, no, I, and I don't think they're like I don't think they're making anything that they intend to be a big blockbuster at this point. Um, hmm. I'm trying to see if there's any other ones. <laughs> Actually, No Holds Barred is is technically. Hold on. Uh, Oh, yeah, well, w technically their first production was No Holds Barred back with Hulk Hogan back in the day. Um, but that was before they actually, like, made their own studio. They actually worked with somebody else. Um, to see so the they cool thing I could take from this, besides the movies that they co-produced, mm -hmm. is if you're a wrestler and your movie comes on the big screen, mm -hmm. they probably have their hands behind this. What do you mean? It seems like, I mean, I'm looking at some of the, the posters, and these are all wrestlers that yeah. they're starring. Typically, yes. So, Typically, yes. And actually, if you go to the Wikipedia, there's a, there's a, more, there's a bigger list of, of uh, everything on here. Uh, but again, they haven't really done big pushes. This is the first time they, they've had a movie go to a full theater run since looking at this. I'm going all the way back to 2009 with 12 rounds. Yeah. Um, the Condemned with Stone Cold uh, was one of theirs, of course. The Marines, you know, evil, right? Uh, they're actually doing a Scooby Doo Goes to WrestleMania movie. Cartoon. Movie. No comment on that one. No comment on that one. <laughs> uh, but that's, you know, one of those Warner Bros. animation ones and everything. So, I mean, this is just kind of, I think, their, their reach out arm to get, you know, their guys into movies, to get movies made. Um, the co-produced app because I mean they're they're more than just you know a wrestling company they're an entertainment company so this is one of the things that they do and and, um, and I think it's a varying success of course but I think that's one of those things we talk about that you know Best Man Holiday that was really low budget mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you see a big budget on Dead Man Down or The Call uh, other than they got yeah. Colin Farrell and Halle Berry um, but that's not again they're not aiming to be any sort of a blockbuster at that point. Um, Maybe, I mean, besides the call with Halle Berry, that, that made a whopping domestically $51 million. Yeah. I wonder how much of that $51 million she signed on for. Yeah, exactly. But I, I don't know. I, th I think somebody like a Halle Berry goes, like, does the, okay, this is the one that makes me all the money with the X-Men, and then this is the one that I want to do because it's an interesting film, you know. Um, like well, it did it, seem like it had a somewhat interesting premise, but mm -hmm. that was one that I also, I think that's in my DVD queue for Netflix. Mm -hmm. Let me know, if you, if, you, if you watch that, if you get to it before I do, let me know how that goes. I, I, I'm really curious to see how that movie come, came out. I mean, it looks like a good movie, to be honest. Uh, not like, again, not like a crazy, I, I, I expected more out of The Call than I did out of Dead Man Down. Hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, I saw Colin Farrell, and, and I was like, oh, this, I like him. He's a good actor. I have high hopes for this, I think, 10 minutes in. And uh, also, um, Howard, Lo or Howard Lawrence, uh, why do I butcher his name? Terrence Howard. Wow, sorry. <laughs> uh, he was also in that movie, and to, just did not. They didn't do it for me. In a related note, I'm being reminded of in the chat room, Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies premieres uh, this weekend uh, locally in Uniontown. 
Oh, it's going to be live or locally? Is no, in... no, it's a movie. It's a movie. I, mean, I know. Movie. I know several people that are, that are in oh, it. Oh, I, I really wanted to go and just see wrestlers and zombies going at it. No, on no. the streets of Uniontown. That'd be. Well, that's kind of what Uniontown's I... like, anyways. I would have driven to see that. <laughs> hey, uh, let's wrap up uh, the news real quick because right. this is a topic that I don't think should be in the news, but somehow is. Hey, guess what, Mike? Hmm. Uh, R2D2 is supposed to be in Why Star do you Wars. say that backwards? What is wrong with you? R2D2. What did I say? R2D2. 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 This is like the second <laughs> time you've done that. Man. Man. I'm tired. I'm still I'm tired and I'm still at work. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know what? I'm glad, you know, maybe with everything going on and everybody's worried about how are these movies going to play out in comparison to the other ones. Um, also, you can't be friends with Chachi anymore because you can't say that appropriately. Uh, hey, Chachi, RD22. Uh, I don't think I can do the show with you anymore if you keep doing that. 22DR. What? Dr. 22. <laughs> um... Wow. Uh, I like the way you're like in the middle of a three way conver- or a very one dimensional conversation, but you're getting it from both sides. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just lost the listener. Uh, sure, plenty more. Uh, you, can, uh, you can send your complaints to at Rambling Mango on the Twitter, yes, you by can. the way. Uh, no, I think it's, it's kind of good that they confirm this just so. Uh, with all of the upheaval and what are they going to do with it? They say, "Hey, he's going to be here. It's okay. Don't worry about it." You know. Um, but that, I mean, were you worried that he wasn't going to be in it? I didn't expect him to. I'm not worried, but I mean, you, have you watched Fanboys? That's probably accurate. Oh, jeez, that's another one that is in my queue. Well, let's ask the chat room. We got some Star Wars buffs out there. Are you got? Were you guys worried? Are you relieved to know that R two D two is going to be? Uh, coming back, um, exactly. You don't know until, until it's announced. I mean, it, it's uh, you don't know. You know, this quells your fears to say, "Well, there's my ticket. They're at least going to have R two D two. There's going to be an anchor of hope in this." And it is uh, a question mark because this is going to be uh, supposedly you know way after the other ones. So uh, you know, who knows who's going to be in? It? Who, who knows who survived through? Um, I, I guess it just seemed I don't know for me it just seemed like a rational like a duh like of course he's going to be in it somewhere like we'll see some kind of inkling of a remnants of something that you know attributes it to what we all grew up with so I don't know it's just whatever I mean if it's it's news to people it was you know it's it's on the internet <laughs> <laughs> And that is your expert opinion, I see. So, we'll see. Hey, I mean, I he'll... could call up J.J. Abrams after the show and ask him to get more detail. Come on, J.J. Come on, J.J. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, so, you know, this weekend, there's a big movie coming out. What's coming out this weekend? One that everybody's been talking about. What's everybody. It? I don't listen to it's everybody, been, Malenko. It's been in the streets. I don't. I don't. The go, streets of Pittsburgh. I, I don't play in the streets like those, like those children that that do that. What What are you talking about? What you haven't You haven't seen any arrows on fire going through your face? <laughs> what kind of neighborhood going, do you live in? Being by you. I, I live in a nice neighborhood <laughs> in Pittsburgh. I don't know about you. He's. These are the mean streets of Northside. My God, what are we talking about? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hunger Games. Hunger Games. The, the second one, Catching Fire, the, is officially the name, I believe. And? I feel like Hunger Games should really be a movie about hungry people is that it, just it play games. Of, I, mean, I think they're pretty hungry. Um, I probably won't go see this. Uh, to be honest, unless it's like, hey, <laughs> I mean, oddly, I have a free weekend, um, so so maybe, um, but yeah. Well, what you should do with your free weekend is you should go see Delivery Man, and I'll go see Hunger Games. <laughs> Why Hunger, am I going to go Hunger, see Delivery Hunger, Man? Hunger, Hunger Games. But no, not that I'm, I think that it's going to be a, a bad movie or anything. Um, no, it's just... Uh, just I, I'm not as ex- well, I wasn't really excited. The first one we went to was like, "Hey, everybody's talking about this. Let's see what this movie's about, right?" Yeah. Um, and I know what it's about, and I know that I can wait until Netflix because one, I know that they have a deal, and it's coming to Netflix first. 
Um, yeah. Like like the last one did. Um, so I'm not worried about. It. So why not? So. Uh, so what, tell me about Delivery Man. And actually, I saw you saw this trailer, and uh, I think in front of Thor too. <laughs> And uh, it, yeah, I think it was. It important. looks entertaining. Uh, maybe not theater worthy, but entertaining. Why are you sending me to yeah. this one? I was uh, I was kind of bummed about. Well, I mean, again, I will I will premise this by saying, critics get paid, or whatever. I I, mean, I could technically we're all critics in some form or not, and it's all our opinion. But Rotten Tomato is bashing this film, and based on what I saw in the previews. And on the premise that this is a Vince Vaughn film, I don't care. It looks hilarious. It does. So I will probably see it in some form. This seems like I just don't know when. It seems like a feel good movie. It seems like it's going to be way better than the internship looked like it was going to be. Oh I still gosh! Want to Another see movie it. I started and did not finish. Really, really, I, I kind of want to see it just for the Google angle to see what they did with it. I got as far as the first ten minutes where they said. You guys are out of a job, and they're like, well, what are we going to do? And then some, like, next scene is like, I got his internships at Google. Like, all right, I'm done. Like, it was that, <laughs> it was that, that like, weird and quick and, and no progression, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, this is Google. Sad attempt, Google. <laughs> like, they need to publicity. I would. This is one of those like I'd love to be a fly on the wall to see which came first. Like, did Vince Vaughn approach them, or did they say, "Hey, hey, hey we'd love to do a movie with you, and it'll be great"? And it's about Google. Somebody at Google laughed at those jokes. You know that. I'm sure, like everybody at Google. Well, I take that back. I read an article where probably not everybody at Google was laughing, but I'm sure there was like five people at Google <laughs> that couldn't stop rolling around. Is that all that's coming out this week? That's it. Those are the only two big ones. Awesome. Malango, thanks a lot. I know which movies to avoid. Wait, 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 wait you're sending me for Delivery Man. How'd that work out? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, my brother, my brother's probably going to make me see Hunger Games during Thanksgiving. So maybe I should save my money and see Delivery Man now. And drag Chachi with me. There you go. See. Take Chachi. I, I know Chachi, uh, a lot of comments from the chat room tonight. Uh, Chachi said he's going to start going to see movies that all the movies that you don't like. So, <laughs> so I can't wait to see how that turns out. And I hope he live tweets when that happens. And uh, he tweets you with it, too. Um, we had some... he, has to, he has to remind me, what movies have I not liked? <laughs> to, I don't even know. According to him, all of them. <laughs> so and I apologize. I, I, wanted, well, Mike. I wanted to grab all. Of, he just added the internship. <laughs> and, oh, tonight Percy Jackson. Uh, yes. Although you know what, I would love to bring Chachi on the show after he sees Percy Jackson and tell me what he thought. Because I, I, you know, I totally went into that movie <laughs> on the visual effects end. And I like a good story, See, and I vomited. His Rebecca. list is Percy Jackson, the Colin Farrell, and internship. Awesome. So the man down, <laughs> apparently, I guess. Um, no, I, no, can't, I can't wait for nightly news where like, we see Chachi's face bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, if you're like Josh, you're anybody else, you have a different opinion, go on the YouTube right here at the bottom and leave your comment. Um, or hit us up on Twitter at Rambling Mango, at Sorgatron for me. Um, or, you know, you can, you, I, I love this, and we did this a couple times on some of our other shows, and I think this is the perfect thing for people to let their opinion out. And we will play these on the shows as long as they're, you know, pretty good, like 30 seconds or something. Uh, but if you go to YouTube and hit that upload button, because uh, you all have accounts at this point, right? If you hit that upload button and there's a record uh, uh, like just from your webcam which most of us have webcams and you can let us know what you think of a movie or give us your mini review or tell us how uh, much you think Malengo doesn't like good movies um, yeah, yeah so. or you can tell me which movies you would like me to watch exactly I will do that. so message those over uh, tweet them over uh, put them on the YouTube send them through the YouTube however I don't know they just change all the comments on there link them I think you can link them now on there uh, what's this no, that was me. 
Just being weird. Okay. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot. It's been a movie minute. Uh, check us out. We're here live uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com every uh, Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern to talk movies here on our little water cooler. Uh, so uh, thanks, Malingo. Thanks, everybody in the chat room. We'll see you guys next week.